The majority of dog owners, many who have owned dogs their entire lives, don't know how strong the pack instincts are that control their family dogs. To demonstrate this, I chose to show you the video that you're now watching. This is a litter of eight-week-old puppies. While my training DVD on pack structure is not strictly a puppy DVD, this video is perfect to show you how strong pack and rank drive are genetically ingrained or hardwired into the everyday behavior of the domestic dog. Now, I should also say that I did not use this footage in my training video because I had better examples of pack structure with other puppies and adult dogs and their pack structure training. I'm about to set up a scenario here that demonstrates how dogs will establish rank within their family pack. What you're about to see is how many dogs, not all, but many of them, at every age can resort to aggression to establish their rank within the family pack. Keep in mind that when you bring a dog into your home, you and your family become this dog's new family pack. And in the eyes of the new dog, until you establish pack structure, you and your family are no different than the dog's litter mates. If you don't establish pack structure and leadership, the dog is going to do it for you. So as you watch what I'm about to show, be thinking of a few questions. One of them would be that if you have small children, what would happen in these circumstances? You should ask yourself, if one of these dogs were two years old, would you be able to handle this kind of behavior if it was directed at you or one of your family members? And then... Do you honestly think that obedience training will solve these kinds of issues? And if the answer is yes, please tell me, what exercises in obedience would you train to solve these problems that you're going to see? Now, these puppies have not been fed this morning. There are nine in the litter, but I'm going to separate three of them into one of our whelping rooms. I'm going to toss one bone in with three puppies to demonstrate how even small puppies will resort to aggression to establish and enforce their rank with littermates or with their family pack. And then in a few minutes, I'm going to add the other six puppies to again re-demonstrate how adding additional dogs will affect the situation. Now let's have a look. I would hamper a guess that 99.99% of the pet owners out there have no idea that such small puppies can have the level of aggression that you're about to see. I will also add that this is not that uncommon. Toss one bone in with a litter of most breeds of puppies at this age and you will see this behavior. Did you notice the fact that when she looked at me, her entire body language and demeanor changed for just that split second? Her ears went back and she wagged her tail because I'm her pack leader and that's her way of showing me that she's not going to be aggressive to me over this food. Now we're going to add the other dogs. You're going to see a level of aggression that I think you would be surprised could come from a small puppy. In the canine world, possession is nine-tenths of ownership. That's pretty obvious here when you see these other puppies submitting to the fact that this puppy has the bone. That's about to change real quick when this green collared puppy comes into the room. Look at the tail on this puppy here. Right now. This puppy does not like the green collared puppy.
So ask yourself, if you have a child, say, that's under six or seven years old, notice the puppy look at me and the ears went back a second ago, but if you have a child that's, you know, two, three, four, five, six years old, and they go up, and they're going to take this bone away from this puppy, do you think that this eight-week-old puppy can do some damage to their face if it turns to bite them? Because people have not established pack structure with the puppy. <laughs> Puppy's teeth are like little razors. Kid's skin is very soft. Now this puppy doesn't even have the bone anymore. In a second, watch how he looks at me right there. That's a sign when the ears go back, a sign of submission. Now we have a different situation. We have another puppy, a different puppy, that has this bone. This puppy is also not the pack leader. It's pretty obvious that rank was just established between the blue and the purple collar puppies here. This is classic interaction between litter mates to establish ownership and leadership. This is how puppies genetically work things out. So when you bring a puppy into your home, your new puppy doesn't magically come up with another method of determining its rank within your family pack, which in effect, you are his new litter. Now, keep in mind what I said a few minutes ago, which is that in the canine world, possession is nine-tenths of ownership. In this short video, we have seen this principle displayed more than once. We've seen several puppies take possession of this bone. Each has acted aggressively towards the other litter mates. The subtle thing I want to point out is that each of these puppies has displayed different reactions. This puppy is obviously self-confident and the highest ranking pup in the litter. We see this in her demeanor and how the other puppies defer to her. When the lower ranking pups had the bone, they were actually more aggressive than the dominant pup because they knew that the other dogs were going to try and take the bone away from her. Now you're going to see something the average person would probably miss. Cindy's going to step into the room. This bone has a piece of newspaper on it. She's going to reach in and take the newspaper off this bone. Now this puppy is not going to do a single thing to her. That's because they respect her as a pack leader. She could just as easily have reached down and taken that bone away from the puppy and it would not have shown aggression to her. Now. Let's relate this information to dogs and small children. You've just watched the first nine minutes and 15 seconds of this 22-minute podcast. YouTube doesn't allow me to put a 22-minute video up. If you want to watch the rest of this podcast, you can go to my website at learberg.com forward slash 308.htm and watch the entire podcast. If you're not familiar with Learberg, Learberg.com is the largest dog training website in the internet with over 10,000 pages on dog training information.